In today's video, we are going to delve into a comparison between the refrigerant gases R22 and one of its substitutes in air conditioning equipment. We are talking about our 407 c Let's start with R22. This gas is a pure refrigerant, which means it is composed of a single gas. On the other hand, our 407 c is internally formed by the mixture of several gases. This difference in composition is significant and has implications for the recharge of refrigeration systems that use these gases. In the case of R22, it is possible to recharge it in both liquid and gaseous phases without any issues. This is due to its nature as a pure refrigerant. However, our 407 c being a gas mixture, must always be recharged in the liquid phase. This is an important consideration to keep in mind when performing maintenance on refrigeration systems. In addition to the difference in composition, it is interesting to know the internal proportion of each component in our 407 c our 407 c contains approximately 23 percent are 32 25 percent are 125 and 52 percent are 134 a these components contribute to the properties and characteristics of the refrigerant gas another significant difference between the two gases is their compatibility with different types of oil 22 south african rand is compatible with mineral oil and alkyl benzene but not with poe oil on the other hand, the refrigerant gas or 407 c is only compatible with POE oil. This implies that when replacing R22 with R407 c in air conditioning equipment, it is necessary to change the oil due to the differences in gas properties and lubrication requirements. Regarding performance and cooling capacity, 22 South African Rand is superior to the refrigerant gas or 407 c, although the differences are small. As for performance in heating mode, both refrigerants exhibit similar characteristics in heating mode. However, the performance of our 407 c may be slightly inferior. On the screen, we have the capillary tube table for our 407 c compared to that of our 22. We can observe their relationship and the reason why it is not necessary to change the capillary tube when replacing our 22 with our 407 c. R22 has the disadvantage of ozone depletion, which is the main reason why it must be replaced by our 407 c The pressures of R22 and our 407 c are very similar. Let's take a closer look at them. We can say that it is a refrigerant that handles medium pressures. Let's start analyzing the most used pressures. 1. Low temperature system freezing to minus 20.5 degrees Celsius, approximately minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look in the table to reach this temperature in the evaporator, we need that when the equipment is turned on, it marks a pressure on the low manometer of approximately 20.1 psi. This value is equivalent to 1.3 bars. 2. Average temperature system freezing to minus 9.4 degrees Celsius about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look in the table to reach this temperature in the evaporator, we need that when the equipment is turned on, it marks a pressure on the low manometer of approximately 37.8 psi. This value is equivalent to 2.5 bars. 3. High temperature system. Refrigeration without freezing or air conditioning equipment. Another. In this case we are going to have a temperature of 4.4 degrees Celsius approximately 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look in the table to reach this temperature in the evaporator, we need that when the equipment is turned on, it marks a pressure on the low manometer of approximately 68.5 psi. This value is equivalent to 4.6 bars. 4. Now we are going to look for the high blood pressure in the table. For this we are going to take as an example, an external environmental temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. We increase this value by 10 degrees Celsius and look in the table for a pressure value for approximately 40 degrees Celsius. Thus we have in the table, a pressure of approximately 211 psi. 
This value is equivalent to 14 bar. 5. Another pressure value that is usually important is the pressure of the equipment when it is turned off. In this case for the same room temperature, we look directly in the table for an approximate value of 30 degrees Celsius and we obtain a pressure value of about 156 psi. We are going to focus on the gauge pressures of our 407C8 in an air conditioner. Hello. On the left in the first column we have the saturation temperature. In the next two columns we have the bubble or liquid pressure and then the vapor or dew pressure. If you are wondering why there are two types of pressures, this is because the gas has slipped. This sliding means that the temperature of its transformation from liquid to vapor or from vapor to liquid does not remain constant. In an azeotropic mixture, the change of state of the most volatile compounds occurs first. This causes the temperature to increase throughout the phase change, until evaporation occurs in its entirety. Let's see the most common working pressures. They work with steam pressure, which is usually the most used. 1. To reach a temperature of 5 degrees C in the evaporator, typical of air conditioning systems, equivalent to 41 degrees F, a low gauge pressure of 4.45 bars is needed, equivalent to 65.42 psi or 449.45 kilopascals. 2. For an outdoor environment temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, the condenser temperature is usually about 10 degrees Celsius above the environment where the equipment is located. Thus in the table for 40 degrees Celsius, about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The high gauge pressure in the condenser is 14.29 bars, equivalent to 228.88 psi or 1443.29 kilopascals. 29 kilopascals. 3. For an outdoor environment temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, about 86 degrees Fahrenheit, the equipment turned off at this temperature has a gauge pressure, both high and low, according to the table of 10.68 bars, equivalent to 157 psi or 1078, 68 kPa. List. The parts of an air conditioner that works with R417 refrigerant gas are the same as conventional equipment. So we have 